I, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. He had so dedicated himself to the cause of Christ that he considered himself a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Have we reached the point to, in our lives that we can say that for this cause, I, Burton Murphy, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Everywhere I go, anything I do, my, all of my actions, everything about me is pointed toward the gospel of Jesus Christ. The bride of Christ can honestly say that I, for this cause, I, Burton Murphy, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. That's the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is just spectators. Everybody else just has a hope that my good outweighs my bad. Yeah. You always wondered how that, that verse of Scripture was going to tie into things. Mm -hmm. That Paul said, uh, in hopes that, that my good outweighs my bad. I always wondered, everybody that's not the bride of Christ, that's the ones that, that's going to be able to stand at judgment and really pray and say, oh, I hope my good outweighed my bad. Yes. But thanks be God, the, the, the grace of Jesus Christ, the mercy of Jesus Christ, that dispensation of grace, and he said himself, he said, all that come to me, I'll in no wise cast you out. So thanks be to God for that. But the bride of Christ is going to be able to say that I, for this cause, I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Why? Because I have pointed my face toward Jerusalem. Steadfastly pointed my face toward Jerusalem. As Daniel had determined in his heart and opened that window, knowing that if the wrong people went by his window and heard those prayers, knowing what the ramifications would be, Three times a day, he knelt and prayed. And he prayed until he got that answer. Until that angel came and brought him that answer. He pointed himself toward Jerusalem. Jesus Christ himself, the Son of Man, set his face steadfastly toward Jerusalem. Paul the Apostle, pointed himself toward the gospel of Jesus Christ. Peter pointed himself toward the gospel of Jesus Christ. John. John the Revelator. Timothy. All those. We can come on down. Martin Luther. Martin Luther was a man that, he was a man of reformation. A man that was a Catholic and was seeing what was going on within the Catholic Church and it so infiltrated him. Why? Because there was a seed inside of Martin Luther that he didn't even know existed from before the foundations of the world. But when that seed of God that was inside of Martin Luther saw what was going on within the Catholic Church, something rose up in him and said, this is not right. And when he sat down and began to write that 95 thesis, about what's wrong, did he become a man that had to flee for his life? Now the Catholic Church gets mad when you talk about Martin. Now he was wrong. He wasn't right. Martin Luther wasn't right. And they tell everything about Martin Luther wrong. Now that's what they'll tell you. Martin Luther was a bride of Christ. Had to be. Why? Because he was the messenger of that day. He was the messenger for that church age. A reformer. You see, we're past the reforming that stage. There's no more reforming. Martin Luther done brought the message of reformation. John Wesley done brought the message of justification. All six of those church ages, those messengers that those, that those messengers brought. Now it's time to begin to bring them all together under the canopy of Jesus Christ. A lot of people don't believe it, but it's already been done. 
A lot of people don't believe it, but it's been done. Now, do I understand all of it, and can I preach it? Do you know I can? I'm not, I'm not that, that dumb to stand up here and even pretend that I could, but it's already been done. As God gives, we'll deliver. And I have full confidence that this congregation will accept that that God reveals because why? I believe that we are a people that have steadfastly pointed our face toward Jerusalem, toward the gospel of Jesus Christ. And for that, we don't get puffed up and proud in our spirit and ourselves, but you can be proud of yourself for being a people that God knows you're here. God has blessed you. He's kissed you with grace and with mercy. And more importantly, He has revealed to you His Word. When God reveals His Word to you, God will reveal His Word to places, and if they reject the, the full gospel, don't get me wrong, I'm not, talk, I'm, I'm not talking about anybody other than what we are doing right here, but I do know one thing, any place that He is not welcome, He'll leave them. They can live on what they have known from the past. But the bride of Christ, those that have set their face toward Jerusalem. As I was up there before church the other night and Sister Dorothy Gilbert, we were talking a little bit. And she said, you know, she said, I'm, I'm, we was just talking about how good God is and how merciful he is and what God's done for us in our personal lives. She said, you know, I'm, I'm content. I said, yeah, Sister Dorothy, I know what you mean. I am too, but never satisfied. She said, that's right, never satisfied till we get home. See, we are not under the delusion that Brother Butch, Brother Ricky, or myself, any one of us have yet completely uh, figured out the whole revelation of Jesus Christ. We are not under that delusion, and we don't even try to act that way. There are so much out there for God to reveal unto us and to teach us. And in his time, as Brother Donnie Reagan preached about when, when the, it's coming up time for the children of Israel to be brought out of Egypt. He said when the cogs of God's clock finally ground up to the time. See, when God's cogs finally move and they grind up to the time. Then as the old song goes, when he's ready, you got to move. When it come time for them to move, they had to move. When Moses come in with the directive, now's the time, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this, 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 and this, and we're going to get up and we're going to move. That's exactly, they didn't move one minute later or one minute sooner than God's timeline. And the only ones that moved was the ones that had already set their face steadfastly toward Canaan. As we know, when they got out there in the wilderness, some of them allowed their attention to be averted somewhere else. The ones that kept their face steadfastly toward Jerusalem, toward Canaan, toward the promised land, toward the gospel, they crossed over into the promised land Daniel that's why when he was put into a den of lions that's why he could lay down and sleep beside of a ferocious lion because he never let anything avert his attention from the gospel from pointing himself toward Jerusalem Jerusalem that's why when Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, when he went to Jerusalem and he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and somewhere in the mix of all of this, he went from being the Son of Man to the Son of God and he knelt down and he prayed, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. That's why he didn't call 10,000 angels to his aid, although he could have as the Son of God. He kept himself steadfastly, his face pointed toward Jerusalem. Yes, he did. Times is hard. 
they're not going to get any better. We're going to survive. Because you know why? Because that's what we do. We are going to adjust. Because that's part of evolution. Now they want to really talk about evolution. And that what, what, what the, the scientists say about evolution and the animals is, is they adapt to whatever their need is. And I can believe that. I have no problem with believing that. Because if one thing, I, Brother Rick, I have nothing to prove them different. They got more proof that that's true than I have that it's not true. But I do know that God is a God of evolution. That one might get us in trouble. And that's okay. But they, they say that animals will evolve according to what their need is. That's what we'll do. You see, what we'll do is we will survive. We will evolve into whatever our need is. Why? Because of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said that I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. See, that's what we'll do. So see, our government is not even an option. Whoever the president is, is not even an option. They can have the best of intentions. And I don't believe that they go in with, 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 uh, with bad intentions. Well, no, these people, that's their life. Being in politics is their whole life. And all they're doing is they're just playing out what they've been taught and what they've come up under. And politics and government is just like the church. It has been so infiltrated and so uh, 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 contaminated that it's irreplaceable. It's ir irreversible. So no, these, these, these men and women that go into politics, they're, they're, their intentions are honorable and they're good. The only problem with it is in all their speech makings and all their debates and anything they do, you never hear any of them stand up and open up the Bible and begin to read about our foundation. I believe David said, if the foundations be torn down, where will the righteous go? That's right. Foundations are being torn down. All it takes is somebody not not particularly liking something about our uh, amendments or our Declaration of Independence. So then we'll get a coalition up and we'll, we'll get a, a, a band up that what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Supreme Court Let's mend an amendment. That's what happens. So you see, as, as the prophet said, in 1956, America had a choice. They could choose God or rock and roll. And they chose rock and roll. Now you look at everything that goes along with it. Rebellion. Drugs. It all gets clumped in together. The bride of Christ will point her face to steadfastly toward Jerusalem and be more determined than ever. If we are not steadfast in pointing ourselves toward the gospel of Jesus Christ, any prayer request you set in them seats and make, you might as well keep it to yourself. Amen. Any testimony you give, you might as well keep it to yourself. Because that's what it means. It doesn't mean nothing. Judas's testimony, Brother Bush, didn't mean nothing. Anything he ever done meant nothing. 
We're going to be that people that's going to be pointed steadfastly toward Jerusalem. For this cause, I, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, that's how dedicated he was. He wasn't saying it in the context that um, he, uh, he was bound. He was saying it in the context, this is how dedicated I am and devoted to Jesus Christ. This little congregation right here is that dedicated, I believe, in my heart, that dedicated to Jesus Christ. Are we perfect? Nah. Will we ever be? Nah. Will we experience that complete and total body change from the inside out? Yeah. It's a working. It's a working every day. Because He is gracious to us. We may not know everything. and Some things I said here today, I might have been wrong on. But I promise you, if I'm wrong scripturally, then it was out of not out of purpose. So we're going to take the Word of God as it comes. We're going to try to allow God. And we're not going to try to rightly divide it. Me and Brother Rick and Brother uh, Butch and Dad and Jamie and some of us, we don't get in this little room over here once or twice a week and, and uh, sort of open up and say, okay, boys, let's see if we can't just uh, figure this out. So when one of us gets up to preach, we'll know what to preach. We don't do it that way. We depend upon the Lord Jesus Christ by revelation. We try to depend upon Him just to help this congregation along and help us on our little exodus out of here. Because you know what? We're on that exodus. We're standing there at the altar. We're repeating our vows back to Him where He's already given us His vows. Now we're repeating Him back to them. We're way we're on that third and final exodus out of here to our millennial home and it's a very important thing if anybody thinks that it's not important if anybody thinks it's a it's a myth or whatever you i, I got news for you you're sadly mistaken every aspect of our lives lives we need the amazing grace of jesus christ because we can't make it without him Amazing grace Shall always be My song of praise For it was grace That bought my liberty I do not know just why he came to love me so. He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. I shall forever lead my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me.